Greetings, this is Time Rider at Chapter 4, coming to you from Minnesota, the land of the Tonka Truck. You know, right after I got out of high school, I had this idea that I wanted to become a diesel truck mechanic. So I started going to tech school to learn how to fix heavy equipment. So I guess you could say it's always had a place deep in my heart. What you're looking at here is the number 28D Matchbox Mac dump truck. It was released in 1968 and it was orange with regular wheels. In 1970 they made it into a super fast and changed the color to kind of a pale pea green. They stopped producing it in 1973 but then in 1977 they re-released some military colored uh, Mack dump trucks and they did that until 1979. And I guess those are the ones that you really want to look out for because they have the value. What I'm going to be doing today is a straight up restoration. So sit back and hopefully enjoy. I have three of these. This one I purchased along with a lot of other Matchbox castings for two dollars and seventy two cents. It had a number of problems. The wheels of course as is typical with this type of wheel wouldn't stay on the rims or the hubs. One of the little ladders was kind of bent and as you can see it's kind of chipped up and the luster has gone off the paint. The grill and the front bumper are dull. Really it's in bad need of some special attention. So I'm gonna give it some. This particular casting only had one post to drill out. I'd like to tell you all what uh, size drill bit I use there, but to be honest with you, I don't even know. I've got a couple of them that I use, and I just look at which one will which one will cover the the mushroom end of the post. A uh, drop of oil, and that's a uh, Milwaukee brand two fifty six. Uh, size drill bit and tap. Because of course I need to be able to put a button screw in it so at some point in time if everything works out alright I can put it all back together, yes? You know, I'm not beyond using uh, Dremels and in fact I I uh, used a, a grinder bit on this at a couple of points but I always try to use the least intrusive way uh, to get that uh, particular axle out particularly when you're that close to painted surfaces I I don't want to gouge up the casting and Running the Dremel that close has a better chance of doing that. And like I say, I'm, I'm not beyond using one. Sometimes you don't have any choice. And here I just couldn't get enough purchase on that, uh, that pin to use the needle nose. So I wound up using a narrow-ended uh, grinder bit to get that pin out. Give it a little tug here. Just like pulling teeth, eh? There wasn't a lot of damage on this, but I figured as long as I had the needle nose there, I'd see about straightening that ladder. I'm not really squeezing it very hard, so I didn't wrap it in any cloth or anything. I was pretty confident that I could straighten it without damaging it, so. That's what I did, and it was actually very easy uh, to get 
to get it back uh, to to a straight state. I gave the dump box a once over and I didn't find any damage anywhere on that. So I think I'm ready for it. I actually gave this a try with the needle nose, but as you can see there isn't a lot of spare axle there. So uh, as long as I had the Dremel there with the really narrow grinder tip on it, uh, I decided to give that a shot. It really didn't take very much and I was able to get the wheel hub off. So now it's time to uh, lay on some stripper. Which uh, the paint didn't put up much resistance and I got it into the bath and you can see that uh, was coming off in uh, fairly short order. This is the third matchbox that I've done that has like a, a, a dump part of the chassis like that and you know one of the things about that is is there's all these ridges on the side and yeah you know the stripper gets it pretty clean but I still wind up going over the doggone thing quite a bit to get the paint out of all the little crevices in the absence of professional grade dental picks uh, another restoring artist had uh, demonstrated the difference between the good ones and the cheap ones and I don't have good ones I have one cheap one but I find that the safety pin is still one of the best tools to use to get paint out of the corners and cracks and it has the benefit of being really inexpensive so I actually still use it quite a bit I've always felt that the best time to look at the casting was after you had all the paint off of it. This casting, like most Lesney castings, is great. The detail with the shock absorbers and the, I believe that's probably some type of a fuel tank on the back. Uh, I don't know what the other thing is on the other side in front of the shock, but uh, they did a really great job. Like the little horns on the front. Yep, I really like it. And of course the dump bed, it's straight, uh, it has the ridges which are uh, common on a lot of their dump beds. They're, they're very defined and deep so it gives the dump bed a lot of character. And uh, yeah, I just really like working with it. You can see there's a little bit of uh, casting issues on the, on the back that's very common. And some people file that stuff off. I don't. I just leave it there. It's part of it. It's like patina, I suppose, on something uh, that's old. Uh, you know, you, I just leave it there because that's the way it was cast. So, if Lesney didn't care, I guess I shouldn't either, right? So now it's time for a little bit of primer, and I decided to use the uh, Tamiya light gray on this model because uh, I am going to be painting it orange. Uh, again, when you're doing those dump beds, you got to move it around a lot to get all the sides of the little insets. And here I am working on the main body of the chassis, which was substantially easier, but I still have to make sure I get under that like eyebrow. And I followed up, I used testers paint for this. So here I am applying some testers clear. Uh, whenever I can, I like to stick with brand to brand. It makes it a lot easier and it won't attack my paint surface then. So now that the paint is done it's time to work on some other things. And I made myself a little wash machine here to clean the tires and the hubs. I had actually brushed them pretty good with uh, soapy water uh, prior to doing this. I was really happy with the result. I thought the tires actually looked 
really bad when I first took the model apart and I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to be able uh, to get them to look any good at all but uh, they actually turned out uh, really well the hubs definitely though had a a good side and a bad side so uh, I was gonna have to put them uh, good side out so the front of this thing is metal and I didn't want to use a chrome pan on it or anything or paint it so I just took some mother's aluminum and mag polish and a polishing wheel with my rotary tool and I polished it and I was very happy with the result uh, after I got done polishing it I cleaned it with soapy water and then mineral spirits to get uh, all the polishing residue off and then I had actually taken some tire wash and uh, went into the grill with that to create some additional definition for those chrome grill rails I was really really happy with how the front of this turned out and when I show you the end model uh, take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about it turned out just beautifully so another little tip for anybody doing this kind of thing I was able to put the hubs back on using a hammer uh, because it was far enough away from the paint but I didn't really want to hammer in the vicinity of that tipper so I needed to make a new pen and this is that kit that I bought on eBay for making new axles and you can use it for pins as well uh, where you kind of super glue a new end into a hollow tube uh, it turns out really nice and it worked really well so now it's time for some assembly uh, the windshield I had just cleaned with the uh, soap and water it wasn't scratched or anything it was in really good shape uh, my newly polished bottom is sitting there ready to go on I've got the uh, hydro sleeve in for the uh, the dump chassis and since there was only one post there's only one screw and there you go except for the tires it's pretty much ready to go So I had watched uh, die-cast restorations do this. I had used glue previously on this type of wheel. But what he did was he cut really thin strips of black electrical tape. And then he wound them around the hub. I'm using a tweezer here to try to help me get it where I wanted it. And uh, then you snap the tire on and the electrical tape has the effect of you know making the hub a little bit bigger and it it makes the tire fit now it took me a couple of tries to get it to stay on because sometimes snapping the tire on had the effect of taking the tape off but I found that if I put the tape on and then squeezed it really really hard uh, that I could then put the tire on and I always put it on on over the open end first so that the edges would kind of be protected and boom there you go man Bob's your uncle and I'm replacing that tape because it started to come off the back side of the hub but it was really a, you know simple and oftentimes the simplest solutions are the best so that's how I did all four wheels so well, let's go back and take a look at where it was we started bent ladders chipped up paint wheels falling off a front grill that only a mother could love so let's take a look at uh, where we ended up so there you have it the matchbox 28d Mac dump truck this is time rider at chapter 4 and I'll leave the light on for you
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share with your friends. And I'll see you soon with my next project, which is already in the works.